going on everybody? Episode 41 and on today's episode, we are taking a look at needle bar and hook timing adjustments for your Cobra Class 26 sewing machine. Now, there are multiple ways to do this, but the process that you are about to watch is approved by Leather Machine Company and this is how their mechanics time and test the machines before they are actually shipped off to you. So, we're going to take a look at a few scenarios, make some adjustments and fix the timing on your machine. Let's take a look. So if your machine is not sewn properly and you want to inspect to see what is happening, start by removing the bobbin and the top thread completely from the machine. Remove the two side screws and pivot the plate, lift it up and remove it. Next, remove the feed dog screws and the feed dog. You may have to turn the hand wheel a bit to gain access to the screw. The feed dog is machined and manufactured to pinpoint accuracy and is firmly seated in the grooved slot, so removing the feed dog may require just a little bit of extra strength. A good habit is to keep all the parts in a magnetic bolt so you don't lose anything. While you have the shuttle hook exposed, now is a great time to blow out any lint, dust, or debris. This is the very first step you should do. Take a close look at the needle as it passes bottom dead center and is proceeding upwards. We can clearly see that the hook is hitting the bottom part of the needle and not going through the needle scarf. So this is a perfect example of the hook meeting the needle at the right time, but in the wrong part. This is causing it to not complete the stitch properly, so the very first thing we need to do is adjust the needle bar height. Remove the screw on the face plate and slide it open. Bring the needle to bottom dead center and you will see the needle just about to start ascending up and leave it there. Inside the machine, you will notice that once you turn the hand wheel, a screw that holds the needle bar in place is now visible. You need to loosen the screw, which is very tight, and once that screw becomes loose, you are now able to move the needle bar freely up and down. To set the needle bar properly, you want to bring the top of the needle eye and have it line up with the edge of the rotating hook assembly. Then tighten the needle bar screw back into place. Now once you start turning the hand wheel, you should see a few key things. As the needle goes up, the bottom of the eye should be parallel with the needle guard and the hook will be exactly one eighth of an inch above the needle eye and in proper position going through the needle scarf. Here's a closer look at lining the top of the needle eye to the edge of the rotating hook assembly. Right here you can see where the top of the needle eye is meeting the edge of the hook assembly. And then as you rotate, that bottom of the needle eye lands perfectly parallel with the needle guard. So to recap, the very first step you should take to identify any timing issues is to check the position of the needle bar. Now go ahead and put the face plate back into place. All right, now that you've seen the needle bar adjustment process, but what happens if your hook is not meeting the needle scarf at the right time to complete the stitch? So we're gonna take a look at how to adjust the rotating hook assembly unit itself and get that all squared away and nice and on time. Let's take a look. So here you see the needle at bottom dead center and as it's about to ascend up, the needle hook is way too far behind. We need to make an adjustment to the rotating hook assembly by turning it. The hook simply does not turn freely. We have to go through a series of steps to loosen and make the adjustments. To begin, remove the two bottom screws and the cover plate from under the throat of the machine. As you turn the hand wheel, you will see three Allen wrench screws that need to be loosened.
These Allen screws are extremely tight, so you have to put some muscle into it. Bring the needle to bottom dead center, and then you can rotate the hook assembly to have it properly line up with the edge of the needle and the needle eye. Right here, you can see the top of the needle eye is flush with the side of the shuttle hook. Tighten down one of the Allen screws and rotate the hand wheel to check for proper timing of the hook and needle. You may have to give this a try a few times to get the correct results. So you can see the hook is entering the needle scarf at the perfect time as the needle is ascending upwards. Now tighten down the rest of the Allen screws. Make sure that when you are tightening down the screws that the two gears are connected inside the throat of the machine. Go through the motion of completing a stitch by turning the hand wheel and checking the timing to make sure that everything lines up now that all the screws are tightened. Screw the bottom throat cover plate back into place. For installation of the feed dog, you want to take a close look at the lower black screw that acts as a base for the bottom of the feed dog to rest against as you fit it into the proper grooved shaft. You might need to turn the hand wheel to adjust the position so you can properly screw the feed dog screw into place. Lower the needle into the feed dog to check for proper placement of the needle in the center hole. Next up is the cover plate. As you take a look on the inside, you'll notice that there is a buildup of dust or debris. Now is a great time to clean that up with a little brush and also notice the notch at the top. That notch will hold a retention tag on the bobbin basket and needs to be installed properly. This is the retention tab that gets held into place by the cover plate notch. Start by pivoting the cover plate into place and have the retention tag fit into the notch. Rotate the hand wheel back and forth to make sure that you can hear it wiggle into place. Now put the screws back into the plate and rethread your machine completely. Here we have two scrap pieces of leather that we are going to test our stitching on and see if the needle and hook timing completes the stitch properly. Don't forget to hold your thread for the first few stitches as you begin sewing. There you have it, completed stitches and a perfectly timed Cobra Class 26 sewing machine. Alright, that's it for today you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this information has helped. I'll see you on next week's episode. Take care.